Hello, my name is David. I'm a student advisor with Laureate Online Education and today I'm going to talk to you about the basics of using the Harvard style of citing and referencing. The Harvard style of citing and referencing is an established method of referencing and has advantages of flexibility, simplicity, clarity and has ease of use for both the author and the reader. You'll primarily reference from peer-reviewed resources, although other sources are acceptable. So when you're doing your studying, whether you're reading a book or an online journal or a website or maybe a newspaper article, these things are acceptable. Uh, but just to define a peer-reviewed resource, it is such things as a journal article, a textbook, an e-book, and as a source that has been evaluated professionally by experts and colleagues in the field before it has been published. So there are two main parts to referencing using the Harvard system. There are in-text citations, so this is whether you take a direct quote word for word, or whether you summarize something and put it in your own words, and the reference list which goes at the end of your work. So we'll move on to the first and now in-text citations and using a direct quote. Now when you use a direct quote there are four things you need to remember to do so that you have done the in-text citation correctly. The first thing is to put quotation marks around the direct quotation and that that always is the same and you put them at the beginning and the end. Then you need to put in the author's name, the year of publication and the page number as you can see in the examples I've used here. Now there's different ways of structuring it within the body of your text. So in example one here you can see this is also emphasized by Popcock and then in brackets we have 1983 page 35, in his discussion, etc, 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 and then you can see the direct quote there with the quotation marks around us. In example two, simply put the direct quote with all of that information in close brackets directly after the quote, which is the most classic way of doing it. And then in example three, we've built Popcock's name and also the year of publication into the text itself, and then there is the direct quote with the quotation marks and the page number after us. Now, this is a standard way of doing an in-text citation for a direct quote, no matter what the resource that you've used is. So if it's a book or a website, for example, you, you always need to put in the author's name, the year that it was published, and the page number. So now we'll move on to in-text citations and paraphrasing. So when you paraphrase, you need to include the author or the author's names and the year of publication. So paraphrasing basically means when you condense someone else's ideas or theories and you change the words and the word order so that it fits into your work. However, you still need to give credit to the original author or if there's multiple authors to them. So in the first example here, when there's two, maybe three authors, you can see we put just at the end of the text or wherever it fits in the name of the two authors of that one piece of work and the year of publication. The same in example two, except this time, when there's four or more authors, which sometimes there can be, especially, for example, with a journal article, you just put the name of the first author, and when I say first, I mean alphabetically the first author, and then the words et al, and then the year of publication. So here, Fink et al, 2003. And example three, secondary referencing. Now, this one's a little bit trickier, but still, um, it's very important to do it correctly. So this is when you are referencing your citing from a book and that author has referenced and cited from another book or another article. It doesn't matter if it doesn't have to be a book. So, for example, Stuart 2003 has used an example in Hoffman's and Jones 2005, page 509. But you've paraphrased Stuart, but you've paraphrased what he has said out of Hoffman and Jones. So then you need to put in the information for both of those uh, authors. So that's what we have here. Stuart 2003. Cited in Hoffman's, Hoffman and Jones, 2005, page 509. And that is a good example of how you would combine the two uh, parts of in-text citations for direct quotes and for paraphrasing. So the next and most uh, second most fundamental part of using the Harvard style of citing and referencing is compiling your reference list. Now your reference list will be made up of all of the different references that you've used throughout your work. So it should always appear first of all, at the end of your work. And this would include if uh, your course uses discussion boards and you're making um, a participation post and you've used a quote or you've paraphrased an author in there, 
you will need to include a reference at the end of the post. So it's not just for essays and theses and big pieces of work like that. It should always appear in alphabetical order, and that goes by author's name, but I'll show you some examples of that in just a little while. The details provided should allow any reader of your work to easily find the work you've cited. So by following the specific structure of the Harvard style and the information that you need to provide, then the reader of your work can easily go and find what you have referenced. Now, the title of all works cited in your text when they're in the reference list should be in italics, with one exception of a journal article. In this case, it's the name of the actual journal and not the title of the article itself that should be in italics. And all works that are accessed online should always include the URL or the website address and the date that it was accessed by you. So the first example here I'm going to show you is how you would compile a reference if you had done uh, any kind of citation from just a normal textbook, a hard copy of a book. So first of all, you need to put the author's name. Um, in this example, it's just a person, but if it was a corporate author, you would put it there, or if it was just an editor that was the only piece of information you could get, you would put it at the beginning. The year of publication, that should be in round closed brackets. Then the title and any subtitle, which should always be in italics. So here, artificial intelligence, structures and strategies for complex problem solving, and it's in italics. And um, the series and title number and the edition, if the book is not the first edition, the place it was published, and the publisher. So in the example here, Luger, GF, 2001, then the title of the book in italics, the number of the edition, where it was published, which is Boston, and the publisher, which is Addison Wesley. So the second example is from an ebook. Now, this is quite a similar structure and um, where you put the order of the details and the title of the book is in italics. And then the edition, however, then you need to signify whether it is an ebook version. So if you've maybe purchased it and then downloaded it off um, an online book retailer, so you put ebook version in close brackets, or if you've accessed it online, maybe from a online library, for example, then you would put the URL, that's, that's the web address of where you've accessed it, and then the date that you accessed it. So you can see in this example, it says ebook version here or online available from, and then there's the URL and access the 18th of April, 2012. So you have the two options there when it's an ebook, depending on where you've got the ebook from. So for reference uh, from a journal article that you uh, may access online, again, the author or the author's names come first, then the year of publication. However, like I said before, it's not the title of the article, but the title of the actual journal, which should go in italics. So here you can see the author's names, the year of publication, then the name of the article, but then Journal of Management Development is in italics. And so then you have to provide some extra information here. You have to provide the volume number and the issue number if they're applicable. The name of the e-journal collection also if applic applicable. So here you have Ingenta content. And then you need to put that it was online and then that it's available from this URL and then accessed on the date that you accessed it. In this case, accessed the 9th of June. 2005 and that should always be in closed brackets so some extra information and a slightly different format from the first two examples that we've given now the final example i'm going to show you today is how to reference from a resource that you've got from the world wide web or the internet so again you always start off with the author's name and then the year of uh, the date of publication then the title, which should be in italics. Now, sometimes on a website, if you're quoting or paraphrasing from a passage, the title of that passage or that article might not always be clear. So in that case, then you can use the first few words or maybe the first sentence of the document as the title in your reference. But it should go in italics, like I've used the example here. Then again, you need to say that it was online and available from, so the URL, web address that you got it from and then the date that you accessed it. So in this case, access 21st of May 2004. And again, that should always be in closed brackets. So as you can see, when you're compiling a reference list, all of the references follow a similar type of structure, but need different types of information in different places, depending on where the resource uh, comes from. So to wrap it up, here's an example of a complete reference list. And I've just used the four examples that I've already shown you, but they're in alphabetical order and they're in alphabetical order using the author's names. So if there's more than one author of a book 
the one that is alphabetically first will always come first. So if you take um, the third example here, uh, pairs R and shields G, pairs goes first. And um, yeah, so the whole reference list goes in alphabetical order. And so that is how you start off with the basics of citing and referencing in the Harvard style. Uh, if you do need any more support on this, if you feel like you need more in-depth uh, explanation of the Harvard style, please don't hesitate to reach out to your student support today. Thank you for watching.